for your convenience, this video is divided into different sections. So you can skip to any specific part in the video by using these timestamps right here. Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing good. I'm Immortal Knight here and in this video I'll be teaching you the M2 method that is used for solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. This is more of an intermediate slash advanced method that only solves the edges when you're solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, which means that you need to know the beginner's method that is the old Pokemon method to solve rest of the corners when you're solving a cube blindfolded. For letter scheme, I'll be using the SPEFS lettering scheme which is the most common lettering scheme out there. And trust me, it is really simple. All you need to do is go clockwise around each face and here is how it goes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. Now rotate back to how you originally started naming your cube and now turn down. U V W X. Do keep in mind that my orientation will be green in front and white on top. With that out of the way, let us now take a look at the similarities this method has with the old Pokemon method. Essentially, when we are doing the old Pokemon method, you know that this is going to be our buffer piece and this is going to be our target piece. And we know that because we need to swap these two, the algorithm that we use is the T perm, which also swaps these two corners. And if you're not able to understand what exactly I'm speaking, make sure you check out this tutorial that is the old Pokemon tutorial that I have on my channel. So if you want to swap two edges using the old Pokemon, we do the T permutation. So except the target piece, take a look at which are the other pieces that are being affected by this algorithm. You can say that these are the three pieces. So what does that mean? It means that when we do the old Pokemon method, we need to preserve these three pieces. So whenever we need to bring something to the target location, say you want to bring this piece to the target location, we need to do something like this because we need to preserve all the three over here. M2 method is also really similar, except your buffer piece is going to be this one, the green yellow edge and your target location is going to be the white blue edge in my case. To be more specific, the yellow sticker is going to be our buffer sticker and this piece that is the white sticker will be our target location. So whenever we want to swap these two pieces right here, all we need to do is an M2. And this swaps this piece with this piece. And that is why this method is called M2 because whenever we need to swap something, all we do literally is a M2. There are not many rules that you need to keep in mind when you're using the M2 method. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that whenever you move any piece to the target location, it should not affect anything else in the middle layer. The reason behind it is really simple. Just as in old Pokemon, we know that all these three pieces are affected when we do a specific algorithm. The same thing happens in M2 because we do an M2 to swap the pieces, the whole of middle layer is getting affected. As a result, whenever we do any set of moves, we need to make sure that we aren't disturbing anything in the middle layer except for the target location piece. To give you a clear understanding of what I just said, here is a really simple example. Let us start by taking a look at the buffer location. This is the white orange, specifically the white sticker. This belongs over here, that is the letter D according to the specs lettering scheme. This goes to here which is the letter B and this goes back to the buffer so you don't need to memorize anything for it as this is our first cycle. Again if you have some confusion of what I'm saying right now, do check my old Pokemon tutorial. So let's get started. Our first thing we need to do is to bring this piece right here because this is our target location. Now you might be wondering that we can just do like this but that is not true. The reason is that you're affecting whole of the middle layer. I want this piece to be here but I also want this piece to go here. So essentially if I just do a U move to bring this here, I'm disturbing the location of this piece and that contradicts what I just said. So here is where setup moves come into play. You can find a list of all the setup moves down in the description box. So in this case if I want to bring this piece over here, there's a really simple trigger that I can do. That goes like this. L prime, U prime, L and U. Essentially what it did was it bought this piece to the target location. Now you might be wondering that the cube looks a bit jumbled and that is fine because all we care right now is about the middle layer and you can see that the whole of middle layer is retained however it was except we have now switched the target location. Now I just need to do an M2 as that is my swapping algorithm. And now I need to redo everything I did at the starting. So that would be U prime, L prime, U, L. Now again, as you can see, the cube does look a bit jumbled, but trust me, this is how this method works. Now next in our memorization was the letter B. Now again, if I want to bring B over here, I cannot do something like this. 
as that disturbs everything else in the middle layer. So what I can do is just the mirror of what I did over here. Because this piece is exactly opposite to over here, I can just mirror my whole algorithm to bring this piece over here. So that would go like this. R, U, R prime, U prime. Now you can see that I've brought this piece over to the target location. I can do an M2 to swap and I can redo what I did at the starting. There you go. So this method does look simple and it actually is. However, there are four different things you need to keep in mind when you're doing this method. Say you had a piece over here and you wanted to bring it to the target location. You could do something like this. So that preserves everything in the middle layer and you only change the target location. However, what if I say you need to bring the piece that is this letter, the letter C, over to the target location. Now you just can't do a U2 like this because you aren't preserving this piece over here, neither are you preserving this piece over here. Similarly, if I say that you need to bring the letter W over to the target location, again it isn't really possible because whenever you do that you're disturbing whole of the middle layer and that contradicts what I said earlier. So there are four special cases in the M2 method. Those are for the letters C, I, W and S. Let me show you how the algorithm works for W. First, I need to make sure that I bring this piece to the buffer location and I can do that by doing this, this and this. So as you can see that just put this piece over here and this piece back over here. Now I can do an M2 to swap the pieces and I can just do a U2 to align everything else back to how it was. But don't you think that was a bit lengthy? So is there any way we can shorten the algorithm? Yes, there is. Essentially, after I did the first two moves, that is this, this, notice how I shift the middle layer back up and now I'm bringing it two times down. So if I use arrows to show you what exactly went on in the last three moves, here is how it looks. This basically means that I can cancel out the first and second arrow as they are the exact opposite moves of each other. And obviously we had to do U2 to align everything back together. So basically our algorithm becomes really simple. So finally the algorithm for W goes like this. Similarly for C, here is how the algorithm goes. The algorithm for I and the algorithm for letter S is actually lengthy. So as I said, I'll be leaving all the set of moves down in the description box for you people to check it out. So what do I exactly mean by letter pairs? Well, it's simple. Essentially, whenever we are memorizing a cube for solving it blindfolded, you need to memorize the letters in group of twos. The reason this is important is because whenever we get one of those four special cases that I just talked about, that is C, I, S, W, you need to do the reverse algorithm for each of them. The reason is because whenever we execute our algorithm for the second letter which comes in the letter pair, the cube is not in its correct orientation. Instead, the cube is off by a M2, which means whatever piece was supposed to be over here will actually be over here. To give you a clear understanding of what I said, this is a simple example. Let us start memorizing the cube. Since our buffer is already solved, we take a look at any other piece. Let us say we take a look at this piece. This is the letter D, which goes to C, which goes to B and this goes back to D. So this is our memorization. So before I tell you what exactly happens, just keep in mind that the white stick of white red is in the position of the letter C. Let us start executing now. First, we need to bring D to the target location. Now I can swap and restore. Now if you take a look, you might say this is the letter C, but this is not true. The reason is that this is not the letter C, but this is the letter W. Because this is a yellow and blue center. And if I just do an M2 back, which you are not supposed to do, but this is just for demonstration purposes, you notice that this sticker is actually in the position of the letter W. And our white red still is in C. However, because our cube was like this when we finished the algorithm for D, the letter C is actually now over here. As this white red is actually the letter C. But if you take a look at the solved orientation of the cube, you know that this is the letter W. So whenever you have the letter C, you do the algorithm for the letter W. Whenever you have the letter I, you do the algorithm for S and the vice versa is also true. So now instead of doing the algorithm for C, I would do the algorithm for W which goes like this. Now next was letter B. And back to D. Just keep in mind that this rule comes in handy only if C, I, S or W is second in the letter pair. If for example any of those four letters were first in the letter pair then you just ignore the rule and continue solving the way you memorized the cube.
Just as in old Pokemon, there's also a parity algorithm for the M2 method. Now you might be wondering in the first place, why does this even happen? The reason is simple. Notice that every time we solve a letter, our cube is off by our M2 move. Which means if I solve a letter pair, it will again come back with an M2 and the cube is in its solved orientation. Now let us say you have memorized only 3 edges. Which means when we solve the first letter, our cube would look like this with obviously other things shuffled around. Second, it would be like this. And third, it would again be an M2. Now, obviously this is not how we want a cube to end. So there needs to be an algorithm which fixes this without disturbing any of the edges that we have already solved. So here is how the parity algorithm looks. So basically what it does is it does an M2 and it switches these two edges right here. Now you might be wondering that, okay fine, though we have got an M2 over here, why are these edges switched around? Now here is where the old Pokemon method again comes back into play. If you remember, in the old Pokemon we used the Y permutation to solve the corners and that also switches these two edges alternatively. As a result, when we do our final Y permutation to solve any two remaining corners, these two edges will automatically switch back and we'll have a solved cube. Once again, we have a really simple example to show you how and when should we use the parity algorithm. So now let us take a look at the corners first. This is our buffer piece and this goes to the letter M. And that solves our corners. For the edges, it's really simple again. Take a look at the buffer. It is a white blue which goes right here. That is the letter A. This goes over here, that is the letter D. And this goes over here, that is the letter B. This goes back to the buffer so we don't memorize it. So for the edges, we have this as our memorization. So let us get started. First, we do for A, which has no setup moves. Then we have D and next we have B. Now this is what I was talking about. You see that our cube is off by an M2 axis and we don't want that. So here is where you do the parity algorithm. So you can see that all of our edges are now solved. Just ignore these two as those will get solved later on. Now straight away move to the corners. Our corner just had one letter and that was the letter M. So I bring this over here as this is our target location and now I do the swapping algorithm. And I undo the setup move. So you see that these two edges automatically got solved. The M2 method might seem confusing at starting and that is really true. Even when I learned it for the first time, it was really confusing, but trust me, just with practice and knowing how a set of move affects a certain piece and how do you bring it to the target location, you'll get it with practice and nothing else. As I said, all the set of moves will be down in the description and if you have any more queries related to this method, please feel free to ask me down in the comment section. I hope this tutorial really helped you learn the M2 method and if it did, please show your support by leaving a like, comment, share this video with your friend and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Take care of yourselves guys and have an amazing time ahead.